Okay, so we're going to be doing chapter four, inequalities from FP1 here. And if you haven't noticed, FP1 is pretty algebra heavy, as you might expect for a further pure module. And inequalities kind of leans into that even more, to be honest. Um, and if you've just finished chapter three, I think that's probably one of the toughest ones that there is. So well done for that. This one, I think you're going to find a little bit easier. So what we do in this, we're going to be trying to solve some more complex inequalities, ones that could build all the way up to things that look like this. This is more of an A2 kind of style. And these are the functions here. Um, but if you're just doing AS, we'll be doing part of it about just how to solve them algebraically, a part about using a graphical method, but inevitably you'll find that using both of those skills together is the best way to solve these inequalities. And then for A2 only, there are ones that include the modulus function. If you've done pure year two in normal maths, you'll know what the modulus function is, and it has just slightly more complex kinds of ones that look like this. So let's just re uh, remind ourselves about some things about inequalities and how we might go about solving things. Now, I've just saved us a bit of time of actually drawing this graph for us. We're going to try and solve the inequality 1 over x is greater than x. And obviously, the red graph is 1 over x, our reciprocal graph. And then our blue graph is y equals x, this part on the right-hand side. So we just remind ourselves and we say, OK, well, this is asking us, when is the reciprocal graph greater than the y equals x graph? In other words, when is it above? Well, we can clearly see that the red line is above the blue line here. The red line is above the blue line here. But in the other sections, it looks like it is below. So if I do the below in like a pink color, we can see it's below the blue line there and it's below the blue line here. So the ones that we're looking for, I guess I probably really should have done these in a green. So I'm just going to actually put that in a green for a second because green is like, yep, that's the ones that we want. Then all I'm going to do is just write this using an inequality. So I can see that it looks like the values of x when they are less than minus one. And it also looks like when x is between 0 and when it is between 1. We're talking about this part between 0 and 1 that we've got there. OK, so this would be the answer. We'll talk about set notation later on because sometimes they ask for it being set in set notation. So I've put algebraic approach with a question mark here because I don't know if you'd remember this from pure year one right at the beginning in the equations and inequalities chapter. They actually do talk about how to solve these kinds of things correctly. I'm going to do something that is incorrect here. And I want you to try and think why this might lead to an incorrect um, solution at the end. So I've got this um, equation I've got. I've got 1 over x, or this inequality I should say, is greater than x. Now your instinct might think to yourself, okay, what I'm going to do here is I am just going to multiply both sides by x so that I want to see that x squared is less than 1. Um, if you wanted to, I guess you could also change it like this to do it like a traditional kind of quadratic inequality. So we've got x squared being x squared minus 1 being less than 0. Um, but actually, I think I could probably solve it just from this part that we've got here. So I would go to doing a sketch. I'd be thinking about, I always do wobbly lines when I'm trying to do these, which isn't so good. There's my terribly drawn x squared graph. And I want to find out when it is less than 1. So there's my 1. There's my x squared. And if I try and think about these values where it crosses... That's obviously going to be a 1, and that is going to be a minus 1. So the x squared graph is less than 1 in this section. So this is looking like it's telling us that the solution is that x is between minus 1 and 1. But look, these solutions, they are clearly different to each other. They are clearly different. And this one on the left, this one is correct. And this one here on the right is incorrect. Well, why is that? So I want you to think to yourself, why can I not do this algebraic approach with this thing that we've got here? OK, well, the reason that this is the case is when we multiply by the x down here, we don't know something about x. We don't know that it is necessarily positive. So I'm just going to write this part. I'm going to say we don't know if x is positive or negative. And what might the problem of that be? Well, the problem of that might be that if it is negative, then the inequality sign would need to switch, which is why we've got these kind of correct numbers. We've got the minus one and we've got the one, but we don't necessarily have it all in the correct kind of way around. So the issue here is we don't know if it is positive or negative. And I'm going to put if it's negative and if it is negative, the sign should switch. 
but we don't know if it's positive or negative. So how are we going to deal with that? So this is the revised algebraic approach that we're going to be doing instead. I don't want to multiply by x. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the x, which is the denominator. I'm going to multiply it by the denominator squared. If I multiply it by the denominator squared, if I multiply it by x squared, I can guarantee something about that x squared value. If I multiply by x squared, I know for a fact that x squared is definitely positive. Well, I'm going to say it's definitely greater than zero. It could, it could be equal to zero, I guess, but in this case, because it's greater than zero, uh, sorry, because it can't be equal to zero, I know that it's got to definitely be a positive value, which is fine then, because we've got everything in the way that it should be. So I have 1 over x, and I want it to be greater than x. And you'll notice I sometimes leave like quite large gaps here, just because I think it sometimes helps with this cancelling process that we're going to have. So what I'm going to do, and I'll do this in a different colour, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend you to do this in a different colour. I'm going to multiply this side by x squared, and I'm going to multiply this side by x squared. This is really just for my demonstrations that we've got here. Now, in this particular part, we can see that this x is going to cancel with the squared, which just leaves me with an x. And then on the right hand side, I have got x times x squared, which is x cubed. Now, if I continue finishing this, the best thing to do now is to put everything all into one side, kind of like we did with quadratic inequalities, and see if we can reason from that stage. So I'm going to say now that we've got x cubed minus x. I want to find out when x cubed minus x is greater than is less than zero. So we did that first part of multiplying by the denominator squared. The next part is to do something called finding the critical values. What I mean by the critical values, the critical values are when x cubed minus x is equal to zero. If I solve the equation when it's equal to zero, what that's going to help me to do is it's going to help me to do a simple sketch and then I can do some solutions from them. So if I was going to find the critical values of this equation, I'm going to do it algebraically, which means I'm not going to rely on my calculator too much. I'm going to take out a factor of an x, which is going to leave me with x squared minus 1. And then x squared minus 1, think to yourself how you might be able to factorise x squared minus 1. It's a particular special one. It is the difference of two squares. So we're going to have our x plus 1 and our x minus 1 being equal to 0. So my critical values, my CVs, are going to be these solutions that we have from here. So the critical values are that x is minus 1, 0, and 1. So I've done these two things. I'm now going to do the third thing, which is my simple sketch. So I'm going to try and sketch this x cubed minus x. I know it's going to look like this. It is going to be a very simple sketch, which is just going to feature the critical values of minus 1, 0, and 1. And it's a cubic graph, and we know that cubic graphs generally, positively ones, go like this. I can tell it's a positive graph because of this. So I'm going to go through the minus 1, down through the 0, and up through the 1. I can never do these lines as smooth as I really want to, but whatever. And then we are interested in this graph being less than zero. In other words, I want to think about this thing that I've got here, and I want to find the parts when it's less than zero. Well, it's less than zero here, and it's less than zero in this particular part. So the solutions to that, when it's less than zero, is that x is, let's get this in the same color as before, x is less than minus one, or the other option is that x is between, <clears throat> x is between zero and one. Let's see if that's the same answer that we had before. x is less than minus 1 and between 0 and 1. So this actually does work in that algebraic approach that we've got. If we were going to do this with set notation, let's just do a quick reminder. For set notation, I would do some curly brackets. I'll define the variable x. You don't have to say that it's a real number, but if you want to, you can. So I'm going to say that x such that x is less than minus 1 or x such that x is between 0 and 1. So we've got that in set notation. The alternative for the bit at the beginning that you might see in some mark schemes is you might say x, which is a member of the real numbers, such that. You might see that in place of this, and that's perfectly fine to use as well.
So we're going to do one, two examples, and then you're going to have a go at one before going on to exercise 4a. And we're going to see some more complex ones than this, okay? So, than the one we just did. So here we're going to use algebra to solve this inequality. And in that red box, I've put a tip that factorizing is better than expanding. Hopefully you will know what I mean when I get to that, particularly if you've done Corpure, uh, the series stuff from Corpure 1. So we're going to use algebra to solve this inequality. Now I'm going to do as I did before. I'm going to leave a nice big gap after this because I find leaving the gaps helps me um, solve the problems better. So I'm going to write it like this. And notice how afterwards it says that x cannot be equal to 2 because if x were equal to 2, we would be dividing by um, 0. And obviously we know dividing by 0 doesn't lead to many good things in maths. So my first stage that we've got here, we don't have to worry too much about the method because the um, method mark is always kind of given for this line of working that we're going to have down here. I cannot mul multiply both sides by x minus 2 because x minus 2 could possibly be negative. So to guarantee that it's not going to be negative, I'm going to multiply this by x minus 2 squared and by x minus 2 squared. Now, this x minus 2 will cancel with the squared part. So the mark that you're going to get, this method mark, will be x squared x minus 2 is less than, that really should have some brackets put around it, x plus 1 x minus 2 squared. Now, at this stage, we need to try and get everything all onto one side again because we're going to try and find the critical values. Now, if we're trying to find the critical values, we just need to make everything equal to zero on one side. So I'm going to now do a little bit to find out what the critical values are. Um, I'll tell you what, before I'll do that, I'll put it all on one side. It doesn't matter which side, you can do left or you can do right. I'll probably do the left-hand side. That's just kind of the way my brain sees it, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to subtract the x plus 1 and the x minus 2 squared, and that's all going to be less than 0. So if I'm looking for the critical values this time, my CVs, um, what I'm going to try and do is solve this equation. And this is where I want you to use this tip. I've said that factorizing is better than expanding. Now, what I mean by this is you'll notice that there's some common factors. They've both got and x minus 2, and that's going to happen quite frequently in these questions, just because of the nature of the fact that you're multiplying by things that are squared on both sides. So I'm going to take a big factor out of an x minus 2, and then I like doing big brackets to kind of think, what do I need to get these other parts? So if I take the x minus 2 out for the first part, there would be an x squared. Great. Then I'm going to have a minus an x plus 1, and I'm going to have another x minus 2. So there's going to be a minus x plus 1, x minus 2. And I'll close off those brackets. It doesn't matter if they're square brackets or just big brackets like that. Oh, and I guess because I'm doing critical values, I'm probably going to shift to it being equal to 0. Okay. So we are now going to expand those brackets because I can't really do any more factorizing for this part in the middle. So I'm going to expand those brackets that's inside here. There's going to be an x squared and we're going to be subtracting an x squared minus x minus 2. You need to get very good at factorizing and expanding in your head. So that leaves me with x minus 2, x squared minus x squared plus x plus 2. Obviously those negatives here is going to change with these two negatives that we've got. And the x squareds are going to cancel, which just leaves me with an x minus 2 and an x plus 2 being equal to 0. So my critical values are that x is equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 2. And this actually inequality that we're trying to solve is we're actually saying that it's x minus 2, x plus 2. And remember this inequality sign here was less than 0. So we're going to say that it's less than 0. So we can now go ahead and do our quick sketch where we're going to have 2 and minus 2 and we're interested when it is less than zero. So this means that our solution is that x is between two and minus two for this one. And if we wanted to do it in set notation, let's do the posh, full posh version for this one. We're gonna say x, which is a member of the real numbers, such that it is between two and minus two, like this, okay? Now we're going to try a slightly more complicated one, and we're going to do our answer in set notation. And it's more complicated because of the fact that there are two denominators going on here. And with these two denominators, you're going to see my approach of kind of leaving a big gap after them to help us come up with that first line. And we're going to express our answer in set notation for this one. 
So I'm going to do x over x plus 1. And I'll do a nice big gap. And I'm going to do 2 over x plus 3. Now I'm going to need to multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared. So I'm going to do my x plus 1 squared. And I'm going to do my x plus 1 squared on this side. Now, if you want to do this in two separate lines, you can do, but you're doing further maths. So I think you can handle this. I also need to multiply both sides by x plus 3 squared. Now, I said to leave a big gap. I didn't even leave a big enough gap, so I'm going to leave a bigger one for the next time I do a question. And I'm also going to multiply by the x plus 3 squared. Doing it all with these gaps afterwards is going to allow you to really quickly get to that first line of working that we want. So I'm going to cancel that x plus 1 with this. I'm going to cancel that x plus 3 with this. And I get left with my x, x plus 1, x plus 3 squared. I'm actually going to put it all onto one side as well. I'm going to put it all onto one side. So I'm going to subtract my 2, x plus 1 squared, x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Also notice how we're using this kind of inequality symbol. So... We now want to factorise this to help us find the critical values. So let's see what we've got in common. Well, it looks like they've both got an x plus 1 and they've both got an x plus 3. So I'm going to take an x plus 1 and an x plus 3 out of this, which leaves me with the big brackets. The remaining things that are needed here is an x and another x plus 3. So it's going to be an x and an x plus 3. And then for the next part, there's going to be a minus 2, definitely. We've already got an x plus 1 and an x plus 3, but we need it to be an x plus 1 squared. So there's going to be an x plus 1 in there, and we'll close off those brackets like this. So we have x plus 1, x plus 3, and then expanding these brackets inside the square brackets, that's x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so we've got x plus 1, x plus 3, and that is then x squared plus x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Well, we then think to ourselves, can this factorise the quadratic that we've got? I think it can do. I hope it can do. Uh, so we're going to have x plus 2 and then x minus 1 is less than or equal to zero. Now, if we wanted to say that it was equal to zero, you can do that, but I'm just going to show you other ways of doing this. We're just going to say what the critical values are. So the critical values are clearly, and I try and do them in the right order, and if you don't do them in the right order, you can also rewrite it. So we've got minus one, minus three, minus two, and one. So I'm actually going to rewrite that in the right order. So that means that x is minus three, minus two, minus one, and one. So what I'm going to do now is a quick sketch. Now, this is a sketch of something which is an x to the power of 4 graph. Now, an x to the power of 4 graph, if you've done my chapter 4 from pure year 1, you'll know how to sketch these ones. Um, if you haven't done that yet, what happens is they start from the top if it's positive. It'll be like that kind of shape. That would be for positive, and it would be like that kind of shape if it was negative. So I'm going to do a quick sketch of what's going on here. So we're going to have our minus 3 minus 2, minus 1, and 1. It doesn't really matter about their spacing. So it's a positive one. That means it's going to come down, then up, then down, then up. I mean, that is a very ugly drawing, but it will do the job. And we are interested in when it is less than or equal to 0. So I'm interested in this section and this section. And we're going to be really careful about how we write these. So to begin with, because it's this inequality sign, I'm probably going to go ahead with using that. So it looks like it's going to be between minus 3 and minus 2. And it also looks like it's between minus 1 and 1. But there were some other conditions in the question. This is why I said at the beginning we're using this. x cannot be minus 1, and it cannot be minus 3. So that means... It cannot be equal to minus 3, and it cannot be equal to minus 1. So if I'm going to put it in my set notation now, I'm going to do just the one with the little x at the beginning. So x such that it is between minus 3 and minus 2. Or, definitely or, not and, x such that it is between minus 1 and 1.
The reason it's not and is because how can a number be between minus three and minus two and also be between minus one and one? It kind of doesn't make any sense that it could be in that kind of way. Okay, you are going to have a go at doing this question that we've got here. You're going to use algebra to solve this inequality and then uh, you're going to try some questions from exercise 4a. So pause the video here, have a go at this one, make sure you leave a big gap afterwards and see if you come up with the same thing as me. Okay, so we have x plus 1 over 2x minus 3, leave a huge gap and 1 over x minus 3. So both sides need to get multiplied by 2x minus 3 squared. So there's my 2x minus 3 squared. And both sides need to get multiplied by x minus 3 squared. I almost didn't leave enough space. So now I can do the cancelling part. So that 2x minus 3 will cancel with this. And that x minus 3 will cancel with this. So putting some brackets around there too. And putting it all on one side. That'll be x plus 1, 2x minus 3, x minus 3 squared, minus, and you could put it to the other side if you wanted to, that's 2x minus 3 squared, x minus 3 is less than 0. So doing the big factorising that we've got here, the things that they've both got is a 2x minus 3 and an x minus 3. So we'll do a 2x minus 3 an x minus 3, some big brackets. The first one needs an x plus 1, and it also needs that extra minus 3, that extra x minus 3, sorry. And then the second one, it's got both of them, but it just needs an extra 2x minus 3, like this. Okay, let's go about expanding those brackets for this next section that we've got. So we have x squared minus 2x minus 3 and then we have a minus 2x and a plus 3 like this so that is 2x minus 3 x minus 3 you'll notice that the minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel so we've just got an x squared minus 4x x squared minus 4x and x squared minus 4x can also be factorised. So I'm going to take x squared and 4x, I'm going to take the x out of that and put it right at the front. So that I get x minus 4. Just that x was previously in here, it would have been x squared minus 4x, and that is less than 0. So we can now see that my critical values are x equals, so from the first one we have 0, the second one, we have 3 over 2, or 1.5, but I'll just put it as 3 over 2. And we also have 3, and we have 4. And actually, they're already in the correct order. So if I jump up here, and I just do a very, very quick sketch for this quartic, notice how all of the x terms are positive, which means it's going to be that kind of shape. If one of them was negative, it would have been that sort of m shape instead. So our critical values, we've got 0... 1.5, 3, and 4. Notice how I'm not really bothered about where these are going exactly in like scale or anything like that. And it's the positive shape, so it kind of starts up at the top. So it's going to go down, up, down, up. I, can, I promise you I can draw more smoothly on paper. Maybe it's just on my iPad screen. And I am interested when this is all less than 0. So you don't have to show that stage where it's equal to 0. We're just interested when it's less than 0. And you could have done it on the other side, it would have just given you the other parts, it would have given you a different kind of graph, um, but it would have still given you these values. And so our values are, I'm going to put it in set notation, but you don't have to, x is between 0 and 3 over 2, or x is between 3 and 4. So I hope you got that one correct. What you can do now is have a go at some of the questions from exercise 4A.